Hey everyone, so I uh, found this Performax 1632 on Facebook uh, for a pretty decent price and uh, when I got it to my shop I found that the, um, the person before me couldn't figure out how to get it level so they put this bar on the side of it um, which inhibited just how wide of a board you can stick through there so it was like really just a, a 16 inch um, belt sander at that point. So I used a, a Dremel and uh, removed the bar, cleaned that uh, that weld off. It was a, a disaster to get that thing out of there. But um, after I scratched all that uh, that extra metal away, then I removed the conveyor itself. Um, and then I started to uh, take the motor off and then the the drum itself Between the drum and the motor, there's a coupling, uh, it's a couple of Allen keys to get that off, and then the two can actually separate. Right about here, you should be putting some blocks underneath the drum, and if you had a second set of hands for the motor, that would help out. Uh, when you release the bolts and the couplings, the furthest ends start to sag. Once everything's removed from the cart, uh, I took a vacuum and uh, just a foxtail brush, got all the, the dirt off, the, the sawdust, sprayed it down some Windex, scrubbed it with a paper towel. Once all that dried, then I came back with a rattle can and hit it with some nice flat black. Um, paint is cheap, and it is definitely the best bang for buck when you're trying to flip something. Um, it makes a massive difference. When it comes to the detail work, um, a simple wire brush works. These, I found these on uh, Amazon or Harbor Freight. I don't really remember specifically, um, but really just get in those nitty gritty spots, hit every corner, uh, different angles that you can imagine, hit it with a vacuum and keep scrubbing. Uh, anything with a screw on it, got a squirt of T9. I'll put a link in that in the description. Uh, it's my go-to lubricant for anything that's going to come in contact with, with dirt, dust, uh, and whatnot. Well, I didn't really mention it before, it's very important that as you remove the parts, you put the hardware in specific locations, whether you're going to put them in cups, bags, or just different places on your workbench or around your garage, so that you keep them separate from everything else. It makes putting everything back together a little bit easier. Now, when it came to the conveyor, um, you can see that this belt is uh, shorter than the, the table, and that's because the previous owner didn't know how to fix the how true the um, the belt rotated so it would always drift to one side and eventually start peeling up uh, so after a quick clean uh, cleaning of this i uh, i got a new 
belt off of Amazon. I'll link to that and um, put everything back together and slapped it back on the machine. All right, these bolts here, this is where you make the adjustment to make the one side of the table a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. There's a rod here with a nut and um, two lock bolts that lock it into position. This is a tricky part, I'm trying to get the drum to be level with the table. I used a piece, two pieces of wood that weren't perfectly level, but if you had some, um, some blocks for like measuring your router table or your table saw blade height and stuff like that, those would be perfect for lining up that drum. Um, at the end, it, it doesn't, completely matter because you can fine tune everything um, but that would have just made this process a lot quicker I, I probably spent another um, hour or so tweaking and fine-tuning the uh, the levelness of that drum Here I am marking the table for the conveyor, and I'm trying to figure out which way the conveyor is moving. Um, if it's drifting to one side or the other, if it's drifting to that side, then I'm going to lengthen the table on that side and shorten it on the other. Um, and making small adjustments is the way to go here. Another thing you want to pay attention to is not over tightening the belt. That will uh, lead to it deteriorating and pulling apart faster. So um, once you have everything set, just see if you could stop it from rotating. If it stops, it's too loose. And if you hear it grinding and clicking, it's probably too tight. And once I was done with the conveyor, I just reattached the coupling that went from the motor to the drum and you're all set, you're ready to go.